Hello, everyone. We are back. Hope you have enjoyed your networking. Now, let me introduce you to our next speaker, Toby Langel. He is the principal at Unlock Open, a boutique consulting firm that specializes in helping organizations build a strong open source culture. In this new talk, he will explain why building a strong open source culture matters and how it will help you recruit, retain, and foster top engineer talent. Hello, Toby. Welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, how are you? How are you? Um, I'm good, thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm quite excited to talk about this uh, topic here. Okay, great. Remember, if you want to ask Toby a question, you can do it in the Q&A, or you can raise your hand and come to stage with us. So now I let you talk, Toby. Wonderful, thank you so much. You. Let me figure out how to share uh, my screen. Okay, <laughs> perfect. And yes, wonderful. Okay, so the talk of this presentation is recruit, retain, foster. How to build a strong open source culture is your key to top software engineering talent. So, um, I want to start here with a little bit of context, which is to say that um, open source has been around for quite a while at this point, um, close to well, over two decades, really. Um, and we we have moved from, um, at first, not really understanding the, the value of open source and not really using it, to open source pretty much becoming ubiquitous, right? And if you look today at the percentage of companies actually consuming open source, it, it is unbelievable. So a, a really interesting data point here is um, the um, um, open source security report that is done by a firm called um, Black Duck. Every year, what they do is they assess um, when there are mergers and acquisitions, they assess the, the, um, the, the kind of software that is, is being sold or bought as, as a result of, of the merger or acquisition. And they run about um, 1,200 so uh, of those every year. And over the course of the year, they've actually measured how much open source and how many of those uh, open source was present. And in 2019, it turned out that at least for financial services, 100% of mergers and acquisitions contained open source software. And it was usually quite a substantial amount of the overall software that was part of the acquisition of the merger. The story, however, um, is a bit different when you move from consuming open source software and using it in your tools to actually contributing back to it. And here, um, you know, still in the, um, um, in the financial services industry as an example, um, and, you know, and this comes from uh, the open source programs in the enterprise uh, survey in 2019, um, you see that only 10% of companies actually contribute often to open source and um, you know another 19% contribute sometimes, right? So this is in the, in the financial services. If you look at tech, however, you will see that it's close to a half of the industry that contributes um, sometimes back. So it's it's quite a lot more mainstream, right? So what's interesting for me here um, is to notice that whereas um, everyone understands the value of contributing to open source, right? It, it is not really clear for a lot of corporations still what value they can get out of contributing um, uh, contributing back to it. Um, and so, um, uh, you know, the idea of building a strong open source culture for them doesn't really make sense, right? Um, and so in this talk, we're going to talk about why it makes it actually is valuable to build a strong open source culture, right? And then how you can leverage it to recruit, retain, and foster top talent. So first we'll start by talking about why should you care about building a strong open source culture, right? This will lead us into looking at why do developers actually care about this. Uh, thirdly, we'll look at how you can improve your open source culture. And then once you've actually improved it, we'll look at how we can make it more visible um, well, sort of why you should make it more visible and then how you can make it more visible, right? And lastly, how you can leverage it um, in order to retain, recruit, and foster talent. And if we have the time and if people are daring, we can have a hot seat at the end where we'll look at like 
how your company um, actually uh, presents itself from an open source perspective to potential developers. So please, if you have questions, um, uh, uh, do feel free to uh, uh, drop them in the chat or in the Q&A. And I'm also happy to, 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 you know, to stop during the presentation and sort of answer questions or have people come online if, if um, uh, come live if like you're interested to do so. All right, so let's get started. So why should you care about building a strong open source culture? Well, it turns out that the answer to that is really easy. Developers care a lot about it. I ran the survey in 2016 and I asked the following question, uh, which was how important is it to you to be able to release and contribute to open source software as part of your full-time job? What's interesting here is not only the results that kind of like, you know, speak a lot, but also, you know, there was a lot of people that responded to that survey. Like when I do a survey, usually like hundred people reply. And for this one, it was like, over 2,000 people in the reply, right? And if you look at the data, it turns out that 65% of developers, um, of respondents to that survey, actually believe that contributing to soft to open source as part of their job is extremely or somewhat important, right? Whereas only 18% believe it is not important at all. Um, a year after this, Corey House uh, did a pretty similar poll on Twitter and they had pretty much the, you know, the same kind of answers, right? Um, he asked, is it important for your employer to let you contribute to open source, um, uh, open source relevant projects, right? How do you feel about contributing to open source as a full-time employee? And here you can see that 25% of the respondents thought it was essential, 51% uh, thought it was important but not required, and um, you know. 24% just didn't really express uh, a preference or just didn't really care. Um, and that, you know, here again, it's like over 1,600 uh, people that voted on this. You know, it's, it's, it's quite, you know, there's a substantial uh, amount of reply, right? So essentially, you know, answering the question of why you should um, uh, develop, you know, uh, having a, a strong open source contribution culture is important. Well, the answer is essentially, because developers care and if if you want to be able to hire really good developers this is something that matters to them and so it should matter to you too all right so now let's dig a bit into why do developers themselves actually care and the answer here is actually quite straightforward essentially um whether we like it or not and and i and i uh, you know, there are problematic aspects to the fact that GitHub has become your resume, right? But this is a fact. Um, when you're trying to get a job as a developer, um, you know that your employer, your potential employers are going to be looking at your GitHub profile, right? So being able to contribute during your day job makes sure that you keep a, a to be highly employable on the market, should you decide to change jobs, or uh, you know, should you uh, um, get fired for whatever reason, uh, or should you you know you have suffer from a reorg of some sort, and and then need to uh, be looking out for a new job, right? So it is critical for developers because essentially it is critical for employers. The second point is that the way you're doing open source as an a, a company is actually a window to how the company behaves internally um, and, and to the company's internal culture. You'll quickly see um, that companies that have um, really lousy internal practices or don't value engineering at all or don't care, are very hierarchical, don't really care about um, uh, a teamwork or you know, have plenty of um, issues, this will show when they start to do open source, when they, they are open source. And even, frankly, the fact that they're not open to be doing, to be contributing more to open source is usually a red flag uh, for developers. And not only developers that want to do open source, but just developers that care about a good um, company culture. And, and um, yeah. Um, thirdly, uh, a really important point of open source is um, if the, the the job that you're planning to take as a developer doesn't have 
um, strong values, doesn't do things that are really cool, um, doesn't let you show show you know show the work that you're doing externally that much. It's you know maybe uh, internal facing, uh, maybe it's it's not like a really exciting project that you're working on. But to be able to actually do open source as part of that job sort of like provides this intrinsic motivation that you might not be finding otherwise, right? Fourthly, um, open source is really a culture and companies that are, um, um, you know, that have really built this, this strong open source contribution culture uh, allow you to bring your whole self to work. Right, and and this is something that new generations especially really aspire to and really care about. And then I think lastly, um, if you're lucky enough to have been working in open source for a large part of your um, career, um, you are essentially bringing the tools that you really like along your different along the ride with your different jobs. Right, um, if if um, you know the. If you're a React developer and really care about React, have been uh, contributing back to React, you're essentially able to continue working on the on tool as a as a on React as a tool across your different jobs using the same tool and and you're contributing, you're improving the same tool across all of your jobs, and that is much more fulfilling than having to learn like a new framework in every job you go to. Um, and, and so, you know, that's another a, a real big selling points for developers. All right. Thirdly, the question then arises as to how you can improve your open source culture, sort of regardless of what stage you are in, right? There are always things you can do to improve it. The first thing um, is if you really want to build a strong open source culture, you have to put people first, put communities after people, put projects after people, and then lastly, put your company at the end of this, right? So that sounds a bit counterintuitive to a lot of um, companies that start working in open source and start contributing to open source, but you really have to, to understand that the way that we all benefit from open source, yourself included, is if you're really trying to focus on the community, um, its people and the projects themselves over the short-term benefit for your company. So that's really key. And this is something that a lot of companies struggle with at first. Uh, the second thing is less red tape, right? make it easier for people to do their engineering work and don't have policies all over the place that make that really difficult. Not having policies doesn't mean, or like you know, having uh, policies that are uh, good and simple and straightforward and, and frictionless doesn't mean not having policies or doing, uh, you know, allowing engineers to do whatever they want, right? It just means being very focused on the actual things that are important to your business and allowing lots of leeway and, and trusting engineers to do the right thing by explaining what they should be doing properly. Right? Thirdly, uh, what you really want to do is make open source part of your whole engineering culture, not have uh, sort of like an open source team somewhere and then everyone behave like the old way where everything is closed source. You really want to build that into the culture itself and the culture of the company. This is how you will really get benefits out of it. right? Um, of course, you have to align your open source effort with your company's strategy and its business goals. If you don't do that, um, it's not sustainable, right? You can't have conflicts there. You can't have a business that wants something and uh, you know policy and open source strategies that are driving for something different. So you want to make alignment there so everything is sustainable. Um, and then the two key points that are also really important and often forgotten is you want to measure what you're doing, like you're measuring performance of everything else in your company, like um, who is contributing to open source, how they're contributing to it, how that helps your company meet their business goals. That's super important. And then lastly, you want to reward people for their work. Right? The worst thing is 
if as a company you start to say, oh, we want we only care about open source, we have this really strong belief in open source, we want to believe, a, uh, you know, we want to create a strong open source culture, and then you end up um, essentially not rewarding people that um, invest in open source and rewarding instead people that are just essentially focusing on uh, your know, company's product. So if you want to build that culture, you have to reward it. So yeah, so I, I already uh, talked about these, uh, you know, people of the communities of a project aspect. Um, and I'd like here to um, uh, read a, a quote by Tom Preston Warner, which I think is uh, really interesting and, and sort of like um, talks about this aspect uh, uh, quite well. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the thing here is to realize that by building a strong open source culture and by allowing developers to um, your developers to have a strong open source presence, you are putting yourself at risk of having these developers, um, you know, be publicly facing and attractive to other companies, right? Um, and this is what Tom Preston Werner, uh, Werner the, the co-founder of GitHub, has to say about this. Right? He says, "Let's face it, great developers can take their pick of jobs right now." These same developers know the value of coding in the open and will want to build up a portfolio of projects they can show off to their friends and potential future employers. That's right, a paradox. In order to keep a, a, in order to keep a kilo developer happy, you have to help them become more attractive to other employers. But that's okay because that's exactly the kind of developer you want to have working for you. So relax and let them work on open source or they'll go somewhere else where they can. Right? So this is really something you want to keep in mind is it's important for your developers to be able to do that. And sure, there's a risk of doing this, but there's a bigger risk of not doing it at all. Um, the second thing that you want to be watchful for is actually be pay attention to details. Um, this is something that um, really annoy developers quite a lot. They're really small things. But they show us, they show um, a disrespect for um, people, really, um, and for how they are actually how developers can actually interact uh, with their open source community at large. So, uh, you know, an example of this that I see very often is they're really tiny things, but there are things that matter, and that matter especially to developers. It's things like having really dumb company names, like sort of half of your first uh, company email addresses, like half of your first uh, name and, and half of your last name and sort of the date at which you started working in this company, right? So instead of having like Toby at company.com, you get Tobland20 at company.com, right? This is really dehumanizing. Um, a second thing that you see often also for large companies is um, companies requiring their engineers to have a specific um, a GitHub profile. Oh, I see. Uh, oh, okay. No, I see Gemma asking you to raise questions if you want to. So, you know, that that's another um, common one that we see is like, you know, your GitHub handle followed by the company name um, as a GitHub handle, right? And that is obviously kind of bad because it separates. Um, it, now suddenly developers have two accounts, right? One, uh, two GitHub accounts, one that's for, for them and one that, that's for their, their their employer um and as a result they can't really show as much as they could before the open source work that they're doing for a few potential future employees employers sorry um another common thing that i see that's like uh, you know happens a lot especially in like standardization is where you have like huge legal disclaimers at the bottom of emails um and so every time you know uh, the, a developer from a given company is going to reply on the mailing list like the, you're going to see their reply at the top, which is going to be two lines. And then like, you know, that much text saying that if you get this email by mistake, you should delete it. And, and you know, all of this kind of, kind of like legally stuff. And this is, I obviously understand why some companies insist on those, but you have as a company to sort of understand the trade-offs that you're making when you're doing that. On the one hand, you're protecting, de-risking some uh, potential legal issues. And on the other hand, you're scaring away developers that would make better products. So you have to decide um, which one it is that you want to focus on, the de-risking aspect or the um, uh, comp competitive uh, good product aspect. 
Right. So, you know, I briefly talked about making your policies less of a hurdle. If this is something that you're really interested in, I actually, I have a whole talk on this, on this topic, which is called open source contribution policies that don't suck. Um, it's been recorded a bunch of times, so you can find it like on my website. I'm happy to give you the link for the, for the slides. Um, and also, if you have questions about that, um, I'm happy to take those questions in the QA. Um, so yeah, I've talked about making open source part of your whole engineering culture. Uh, you know, again, here the idea is uh, don't have sort of like a an open source team somewhere that does open source and everyone else doing closed source that that is useless, that doesn't work, that doesn't contribute to the culture. And I talked about aligning uh, it was business goals, measuring it, uh, and rewarding open source. All right. So now that we've improved our open source. Um, um, a culture, uh, and the question is, well, why would you want to make it more visible, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, let's have a look at uh, why that matters and how um, we can, you know, compare unvisible and visible open source on, on one hand and strong open source cultures and weak ones on the other, right? So for that, I'm using, you know, full, uh, uh, typical full quadrant graphs on which you have uh, um, a vertical axis that goes from weak open source culture to strong open source culture and a horizontal axis that goes from an open source culture which is highly visible, promoted as from a company's perspective, and one which is um, uh, highly hidden and really not, not, not obvious to um, out, outsiders at all. If we graph a few famous tech companies in there, um, you know, in, in the um, first quadrant, the top right left quadrant, you will find companies like Microsoft, Facebook, GitHub in there, which have really strong open source cultures that is highly visible to others, right? Um, we actually don't, I don't have good examples of companies that have like a, a really visible open source culture, but a weak one. That's kind of actually really rare at that level. And this is, you'll, you'll find that, you know, maybe that in like really uh, smaller companies. Um, an interesting company here is Amazon, right? Amazon actually has quite a strong open source culture. Uh, they're very involved with a bunch of projects, um, but like they're not, it's not really visible. Um, if you look at Amazon, you don't really understand to what they contribute to it. It's, it's not really visible. And then, you know, the typical uh, company that has a weak open source culture and, and, and a, a hidden one is Oracle, right? Uh, it, it's fairly well known that Oracle, uh, hasn't been a proponent of open source. Um, and as a result, they tend to show it uh, uh, to be in, in that uh, bottom quadrant. So what's interesting is uh, to find out like what that does to um, recruiting, uh, retaining and fostering top talent, right? So if you have a strong invisible open source culture, right? That makes it really easy for you to recruit top engineering talent. Obviously, if your culture isn't visible, um, you will have a hard time recruiting. Um, so, you know, a company like Amazon, for example, isn't going to benefit from its from a recruiting perspective uh, from its open source culture. On the other hand, a company like Microsoft will. Um, now, if you look at retaining developers, well, obviously. Um, what matters here is whether your open source culture is strong or not, right? So you will here get um, lots of, um, um, you know, lots of benefits from a retaining perspective if you have a strong open source culture. And fostering, right? What's interesting about fostering, again, is um, you have to have a... Uh, a, a strong open source culture to benefit from this, right? So essentially, what do we see from, from this? We see that a strong and visible open source culture is key for recruiting, retaining, and fostering top talent, um, and that you can still do a reasonable job uh, and, and benefit from it if you're um, from a retaining and fostering perspective. Um, if um, you, you don't really promote your culture, but you're really losing on the recruiting angle. So two things here is A, build a strong open source culture uh, and B, like show it off, right? And so this is what we're going to look at now is like, how can you actually show off that culture? 
And well, you know, there's, there's a number of like really simple steps that you can take, right? The first one is actually have a GitHub organization for your company, right? So, you know, github.com at slash your company name is, is, is a, you know, a perfectly valid one. And this is something a developer looking for a job or uh, answering um, um, a job offer that you've made will most certainly look at, right? You can even have a dedicated website for it. Lots of companies have that. It can be open source at uh, .company.com. A lot of companies actually use um, GitHub IO's pages system to do that. And so also I have company at github.io, uh, uh, so, sorry, company.github.io as a sort of website that talks about their engine, their open source practices and shows the kind of project that they, they've been releasing or contributing to. Uh, an engineering blog is also um, a you know a very good strategy there, which benefits your you know your engineering as a whole. But um, you know it, it's part of the same aspect of of working in the open and showing what you're doing, um, and so that's also a, a really good asset. Um, smaller things that you can do is actually fund your dependencies. Um, Create like uh, if you're not familiar with it, like Open Collective uh, account, and use that to fund open source projects that you rely on. Um, there is a really good example of a company that did that uh, a few years back. Um, Trivago actually funded the, the Webpack project that it was relying on um, because it needed improvements in the project, and so it funded the project, gave it a hundred thousand um, dollars over the course of a year to build to improve it. Um, and so they benefited a lot from the improvements that helped with their front end performance. They were really happy with this, but it also gave them a ton of visibility and promotion. And in Europe, a, a number of JavaScript developers actually um, um, went to work for the company just because they, they thought it was a, um, a company that really cared about open source and that was ready to invest in it. Of course, you can speak at conferences. Um, and you can also sponsor conferences. I mean, those are you know typical things that you can do to really help with the visibility of of your open source effort. And if you pay attention, you will see that uh, lots of key open source conferences are sponsored by lots of key players in the open source field and in the tech field. And that is obviously not by accident. All right. Um, and so, um, you know, once you have you have this in place, so a strong open source culture. Um, investing into visibility, uh, the question becomes, how can you leverage that to actually recruit talent um, and then retain that talent and foster it, right? And here, I don't know if you're familiar with the difference between brand and response marketing. Essentially, brand marketing uh, focuses on building a strong image for a company, uh, a, a strong brand, essentially, um, that in, in the long term, um, benefits uh, in, in, in places that company is a leader in, in, in a particular um, vertical or in, in a particular context, marketplace, et cetera. Um, and so this is really, well, this is one way of thinking about it, which is to say, well, if we invest in open source long-term, this is going to start getting known and people will join our company just because they know we're leaders in open source and this is valuable for us, right? Uh, you know, a strong example of that would be uh, GitHub. Uh, Microsoft nowadays is also a strong example of that. Google has been investing in open source for um, decades at this point. Um, and, you know, that shows, and this is something that engineers that go work at Google or at Microsoft or at GitHub know and believe in um, and will, uh, you know, drive their um, willingness to go work for these companies. The other thing that you can do um, is um, have a more structured approach uh, of using sort of like typical sales funnels, et cetera, right? So examples of what you could do would be uh, on your GitHub pages uh, or, you know, the open source pages um, um, have uh, job related job offers there to languages. Let's say that you've invested a lot uh, in, a, in a number of uh, Java tools, for example, and you're looking for Java developers. Well, in the part that talks about these tools, why not also say, well, here are all the open uh, positions that we have that uh, are tied to, to Java. So really use this as, as you would a sales funnel um, and uh, you know, rely on this to uh, help get interested developers looking at open job offers at your company. Um, and uh, you know, an another example of that is also 
to use that as part of your promotion during recruiting. If, you, if you're uh, doing outreach to recruit people, um, train your recruiting teams to um, speak about the open source efforts that you're doing and, and how this will actually benefit the carrier of the developers you're trying to hire. All right, and I think that was this. Um, this is all I have for you today. And I'm just at the bottom of the hour. So I think uh, we're uh, perfectly on time uh, to do uh, Q&A. So uh, here's what I'd like to do. Well, first of all, if you have any questions, I'd love to take those questions. That's the first thing. And the second thing, um, which would be fun to do is, um, I I'm happy to do um, uh, the kind, like a, what I would do for like a, cons a really short consulting engagement with a client that would come up and ask me about this. Um, in terms of looking at your online presence from an open source perspective from your company, right? Um, to sort of assess uh, how it would be perceived by a developer and what parts of it you could um, improve. And we could also compare that with how actually good your company culture is from an open source perspective and see if there are easy things that we can improve there. Thank you very much for your talk, Toby. Really You're welcome. If anyone has a question, you can yeah, you can raise your hand, and I will invite you to the stage, and you can ask Toby. Well, you, you can, can just type your question too if you want, and I can answer it. If you don't want to uh, show your face in public, that's <laughs> or you can also raise your hand and talk without the camera. Every possibility is good. So the one you prefer, you can do it. Then it will be good. And while we wait for the question, do you have any tip that you can give to the people? Any general tips? Well, I think there's one thing I didn't really talk about, um, which is that you have to be genuine, right? You cannot um, fake your open source presence if you don't have one. Um, and so you really have to, um, you really have to do the work, right? Once you do the work, actually, um, um, making your, your your good culture more open and more visible is actually kind of it's just extra work that you have to do, right? But mm -hmm. it, it's it works and people see it as genuine and valuable, and no one's going to think that you're sort of faking it. If you're faking it, it's going to show, right? So that would be the tip: don't fake it. Um, <laughs> you're welcome, Alex. Alex, if you have any questions, feel free to to ask. Um, and if not. What I could, if no one has questions, what I could do, what I was planning to do was just show you was um, a company sort of like what the, an open, the open source presence of a company looks like um, okay. uh, from the perspective of a developer, right? So if anyone has a company that they would be interested um, to, to have a look, so we can have together a look at their open source, you know, their presence online. Um, uh, I would love, I would love that. So if anything, anyone comes up with a company would like to check right now, uh, that would be fantastic. Oh, I see a Q and A showing up. Microsoft. Okay, okay Microsoft is an interesting one. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do Microsoft. Uh, so let me see if I can actually um, easily um, share um, a. An, uh, well, I have to share an, an, right. So I have to share another tab. All right, so I would start by looking. Um, can, can you see that tab actually right now? It must be white, I, I assume. Um, uh, let's. I would start by looking at um, github.com slash Microsoft. Right. So let's have let's have a look at this. So what do we see here? Um, can I actually? No, I can't. Um, so you see at the top. Uh, well, you know, a number of things. First of all, you see that Microsoft has 3,400 repositories on their GitHub account, right? That is that is a lot. That is an amazing number, right? Uh, secondly, another thing that's really, really interesting is you see that Microsoft has 4,600 people on their GitHub organization. I mean, I know that Microsoft is a huge company, but this is a huge number, right? I mean, like you already know that this is something you're taking really, really seriously, right? Another interesting thing that you see is, oh, it looks like Microsoft has a dedicated open source website. 
which has its own subdomain, you know, open source at Microsoft, open source.microsoft.com, right? So that's also kind of really compelling. If you look down a bit, uh, you see, you know, lots of uh, projects that have, look at that, like, you know, 65, uh, 64,960 stores. I mean, I know stores are not like a, a huge um, sign of, um, value, but like 65,000 stars says a lot about a project, right? Not many projects have, have that much. So you, you really see quickly that even without knowing the company, it is a company that cares a lot about open source. Uh, now let's have a look at their, you know, their website. Right. Uh, so what do we see here? Well, we see a number of, uh, um, some of, you know, I, I assume those are their projects. Uh, well, yeah, the, you know, .NET. Ooh, it looks like not only does um, Microsoft have its own org, but they have like dedicated organization for something like .NET, right? Um, looking at different tabs right now. Um, well, that's not super compelling. Uh, oh, some interesting sort of like, uh, community resources and other resources about uh, Microsoft. Okay, so I actually think that they're uh, they're a bit missing out, given you know, given how big of a company um, Microsoft is and the kind of like resource that they have. I do feel like their um, their own open source website is kind of like meh, right? It could be, given how big it is, they could be really doing something a bit more compelling and, and, and more um, interesting and maybe sort of like showcase more the actual individuals and their companies doing interesting things rather than just rehash what you can already find on GitHub. So mm -hmm. that that's that's a bit, um, you know, that, that part is a bit disappointing. Uh, but, you know, you can still see like quite clearly that this is a company that cares a lot about open source and that is investing quite a bit uh, and probably, you know, might want to try to push drive their um, their uh, effort of showcasing maybe more the people or how like open source affects their internal culture that I know is actually, you know, very much using open source right now. Uh, so that, you know, that would be. Um, things that they could sort of improve. So if, if Microsoft was to come for suggestions, uh, this is kind of like how we'd start this conversation. Okay, very interesting. We have a question now in the Q&A. Yep. How much code the company do is recommended to open in source? Open source, the core of the business code? So I assume the question here is, um, how much should you open source? And mm -hmm. That's a really good question. And obviously the answer is going to depend on what kind of company you are. Um, I would say that you should open source as much as you can. Um, and what that means is you have to f determine what part of your software stack represents real value for your business, right? Um, really, um, you know, if something is key and that's a really strong asset, you don't want to open source that. Everything else is should be considered for open sourcing, right? Because there's no point. Uh, you know, if if your uh, if your business is um, so so, you know, and, and to take that further, I would add this: if your business is essentially not selling software, you can pretty much open source everything. Mm -hmm. Right, um, And then the only question that you can ask yourself is, will there be value for others in open sourcing that? So, for example, uh, this, this is like um, this is a, a stretched example, but I think it, it's telling uh, Facebook could literally open source their whole platform. Right. Because the real value of, of Facebook, what makes their business like so valuable now is the people on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. So open sourcing the software isn't going to change anything about that. Um, but, you know, the, the other question that they, they might then ask themselves is, well, what would be the value to others of open sourcing the whole of Facebook? And the answer is, well, not really. It's not really valuable. Right? It would ask, it would take cost them a lot to actually open source everything, it would be a huge effort, right? And the value to others wouldn't be big. However, uh, you know, they've seen how open sourcing parts of what helped them build Facebook 
is extremely valuable to others, like React, for mm -hmm. example, a whole bunch of, of databases uh, around it, uh, you know, a whole bunch of uh, infrastructure software. So the answer is essentially this, uh, don't open source the key parts of your business that you don't know how to defend properly. Uh -huh. uh, there are ways to do that, but you have to be really careful about it and know what you're doing. Um, and secondly, wonder about what's the value to others of open sourcing this. Thank you very much. You're so, welcome. Anyone has another question? So last question or last quick uh, a company you'd like to uh, <laughs> uh, analyze quickly. Uh, um, yeah, we have a few minutes. If you have another question, we can ask. Otherwise, we can do to the networking area. Are you going to be here, Toby? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, great. So then the people. Yeah, so, yeah. Will... If you want to come talk privately about your company because you don't want to show it here, then that's fine too. <laughs> I yeah, can you can go to the table and with the video and the audio, you can yep. you can have a talk in there. Yep, absolutely. This Love is that. another opportunity to talk with Toby and to learn. Yeah. yeah, thanks. Right. So, so okay, thank you very much. For You're most welcome. Yeah. And, for, um, and it was having yeah. quite, it was great to have you here. Thank you. Yes, I enjoyed it very much. And I'm looking forward to any uh, uh, leftover questions um, in, the, in the networking time, if you want. Okay, perfect. All right, folks. See you there. Thank okay. you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. And for, for you, you can, if you want to do networking, you can go to any table with the video and the audio. You just can talk with people. You can go to other room and enjoy all the talks. And otherwise, I see you here in 15 minutes. Bye.